Welcome to the continuation of a series of videos on the stabilization of arches. We talked in one previous video about horizontal stabilization. In the next one, we talked about vertical stabilization. And this one is actually focusing on vertical, horizontal, and torsional stabilization. I didn't include horizontal in this title because the title gets too long. But we're really looking at all three of those modes of stabilization. And the way we're going to go about achieving that is we're going to use some sort of tubular element, which works well in bending from left to right, bending in up and down deformation, and finally in torsional deformation. In this case, we're looking at a trust tube which is bringing loads down along this compression member to this buttressing element, along this compression member to this buttressing element, and then the center arch is also working, carrying its loads to this buttressing element. Uh, this bridge is elevated up, and there's a series of steps that lead us up to it, and we're going to take that trip. So first we're going to sort of step over to the side here, to give ourselves a slightly different view. And now we're going to go up the stairs and arrive um, on the bridge. Um, you'll notice that the top plane of this is trussed in a certain pattern um, where it's like overlapping web members, so they're like Warren trusses where we have more frequent connection points and as a consequence we're introducing joints here at the center. We don't normally do that because this joint is unnecessary and adds complexity, but in the case of this particular arch it makes it much more elegant because instead of having some sort of asymmetric kind of pattern across here we have this nice symmetric crossing pattern. That is a sort of a nicety in the light of the fact that in certain other ways there's been a deliberate violation of symmetry. So you will notice for example that the side of the bridge that's supported on this side is all making its connections on the half of the bridge that we're on right now, the closest part of the bridge. All the support for this side of the bridge is running along these diagonals to um, the other side of the arch. The effect of those two things is to introduce a twist or a deformation because these elements are pulling to the left, these elements are pulling to the right. So this member right here is being pulled to the left on this side of the bridge, and then it's being pulled to the right on that side of the bridge. There is no structural logic to doing that. Uh, it's introducing a torsional deformation in the arch, which normally we would like to avoid. However, because we've made this arch very strong torsionally, uh, we can get a, get away with playing these kinds of games. And certain people like to design bridges where there's a sort of asymmetry or an odd rhythm to them that uh, captures your attention. And I hope in the case of this particular bridge, they were satisfied that they did that. Uh, this just shows some connections. These plates are welded. Uh, they're shown welded to the side of the tube. Sometimes plates like this go all the way through in order to avoid locally stressing the surface of the tube. Um, I don't know in this case whether they did that or not. The key thing is there's a fin coming out of this tube that's welded in the shop before this tube gets delivered to the site. Here is a fin that's welded to this web tube in the shop before it gets to the site. And then the actual field connection is with these bolts. Um, the key thing is you don't want to be doing any kind of critical welding at the site. 
you want to make sure that any welding you're doing is pretty easy to do, that it's over designed, and that everything at the at the construction site is held in place well by the bolts, so that uh, there's no undue stress on the weld during the welding process, but also to make sure everything is held in proper alignment. So that's the connector along the arches. This shows the connection uh, at the roadbed. So this beam is coming out and it's tapering towards the end to express the fact that the loads um, are creating a moment which is more severe near mid-span of this beam. And that beam runs all the way through the bridge and then is supported on the other side. You'll notice these beams have to be tubular also because they are in certain instances supporting, they're being supported by cables which are pulling to the side. So we're introducing lateral bending stresses, vertical bending stresses, and torsion into those beams. And so making them tubular is the appropriate uh, response. You may not be able to see it here, but there is a uh, an adjustment. Um, there's a screw mechanism which can be used to adjust the uh, final height of the bridge and to make sure that loads are properly distributed through the system. So it's kind of like tuning a musical instrument uh, to make sure that it's behaving the way we want it to. You will notice here, by the way, that there's a bolted connection there. That is to connect this beam right here to this connection. This beam runs continuously through because it is the primary member or the girder. Uh, this is an, uh, my best attempt to take a photograph through the uh, wire fence and I didn't completely succeed in getting what I wanted, but this is the steel plate at the end of the beam through which we have this pin connector. These rods go up through this fitting here, and on the other side of the fitting, the rods are threaded and they have nuts there, which is the mechanism for adjusting the tension. And this is a view from slightly below, showing these cantilevered uh, beams and the next image is a little um, unfocused, but basically it shows these beams going through. And then you'll notice that this bridge is fully trussed. Um, that's done to resist lateral forces, uh, such as seismic or wind forces on the bridge. But those members, normally we could make like rods, for example, but in this case, you'll notice even the diagonals are the full depth of this beam on the side here. So uh, one might wonder why that is. And the reason it is, is that if we have these members on going straight across and also on the diagonals, they're all of the same depth. They're all connected together with welded plates. That essentially produces something like a space frame. Um, and that whole platform structure has torsional capability, which is another way of helping to distribute oddly distributed loads of people uh, congregating in various places on the roadbed. So there are a lot of different structural uh, techniques and things that are going on in the case of this bridge. Um, that are not necessarily immediately obvious. This is another example of an arched bridge, which by the nature of the asymmetric suspender elements has got bending to the side, bending up and down, and torsion. And in the case of this bridge, instead of a trust tube, it's basically uh, a tubular member with solid side walls. But it's basically the same principle. It's the, it's important that this member be able to resist lateral bending, vertical bending, and torsion. 
That concludes our video on vertical, horizontal, and torsional stabilization of an arch.